for the sake of the argument, I'm wearing a fitted cap. I like wearing fitted caps. I like, you know, kind of wearing my hats like this. And I like kind of rocking it different and just kind of being whatever with it and doing this type of stuff. So for the sake of the argument, let me just say, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the kind of style of clothing as far as people, you know, having like that kind of thug hip hop clothing look or whatever. And I'm not just talking about, you know, um, their clothing style per se. I'm talking about the appearance that comes in and sagging in the middle of this whole entire um, Facebook status. Um, these things that were kind of narrowed out, you know, the the sagging and, and all that. But let me let me just make sure I make it very clear that what I'm talking about, Michael, um, is that uh, with the sagging culture, the, that hip hop culture, even from your own statement, I read your link, that started in prison. Therefore, what these people are trying to emulate is criminals. They're not trying to uh, emulate just a certain style or whatever, like a preppy look or whatever. And I know there are white collar guys that go and do crazy crimes and there's blue collar guys that go and do crazy crimes. I understand all that. There's different types of people doing different types of crimes. And if, you know, if you're the, you know, Calvinist, you believe man is completely and totally and utterly depraved, incapable of any good, um, which is what I've understood from reading any of their literature. However, I do not believe that man is incapable of any good. I believe man is incapable, incapable of being good, but not doing good. They're incapable of being good before a holy, righteous, and just, and perfect God. But they're not incapable of being good or doing good in a fallen culture. They're incapable of being good in our God's eyes, which we know is our main priority. However, what I've found consistently is that when you can reach these young people and you can show them mm -hmm. how big of a difference their physical appearance makes and how people treat them, they begin to realize maybe even this internal stuff has some other truths into it too. And they, what you realize is it's not so much that the style of clothing is what I'm rejecting. It's the appearance of lack of self-control or the appearance of evil. In the hip-hop community, hip-hop culture, people sagging their pants, everything. Look, I know because I've, I've been there, I've been involved with it, I've, I've grown up around it and in it, in the middle of it. Um, I remember when I was real little, um, my dad would be at work and uh, I'd be hanging out with neighborhood kids. My dad would be at work. He'd be working real hard. He'd be doing the best he could to put food on the table. And and uh, not that we had it super rough all the time, but there were times when it was rougher than others. And uh, and basically, I'm just going to take the hat off now because it's driving me crazy. Um, but basically, my dad was off working and he was doing a good thing. He was doing a great thing. However, while he was gone and I was hanging out with neighborhood kids, one of my one of my boys, his dad was a was a drug dealer. His dad was home all day, but his dad got to just lay around the house, got to do whatever, and best believe he sagged. Best believe that he hung out with us and he gave us attention. And to be honest, I found myself wanting to be like that. Like, that dude don't even got to work, man. He don't got to work hard. My dad comes home dead tired, can't even spend time with me. He's hanging out with his boy. He's shooting hoops with his boy. And I mean, so that's what I grew up around. And I understand that maybe now you may be going out to the streets and playing ball with different guys and, and whatnot. And that's awesome. And I commend that. And I believe that we are called to be missionaries in our culture. That's definitely important. But one of the other issues is that in a sense, you're being a missionary to it. I was in the mission field. I was a part of what you would have been uh, of um, ministering to. I'm a, I would have been a part of that. I wasn't super hood. I wasn't super G'd up. I wasn't, you know, I didn't get all tatted up or nothing. I didn't do all that stuff, all that craziness. But I started being like those guys. I started having that attitude, that kind of rebel against authority. And I read what, I read what Brantley said, which really spoke to me in the sense of what, what basically is the issue is that it is, it is a direct defiance to authority. And we know the Bible says that the spirit of the evil one is at work in those who are disobedient. Disobedient to what? Disobedient to the gospel, disobedient to authority. The Bible says respect all authority. Respect all authority and people in authority. And I can tell you consistently that if you look around America, the best jobs are not going to be given to dudes who walk in looking like bums, who walk in looking like they're thugs. And, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to judge. I mean, dude, 
I like dressing up, kind of like hat cocked sideways, nice shirt, kind of swagged out, nice kicks. I like that. I like looking like that because it's just kind of what I'm from and it's what I'm used to. That's why I do hip hop. I mean, it's it's a culture that I relate to. It's a culture that I relate to and want to reach. But I also want to challenge that culture to kind of transform itself by the renewing of its mind, changing its whole worldview and realizing that, dude, you can be cool. You can look kind of tight. You can have a tight dress without having to be completely looking like an imbecile. Mm -hmm. Now, let me go one step further. I was talking with a police officer that I know, and he says consistently, almost all of the, the phone calls and stuff he gets as he's working on, um, or not phone calls, but but calls that they get to go to a scene or whatever, it's these dudes that are like, you know, they say, it's this guy with dreadlocks, he's got blah, 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 you know, he's wearing baggy jeans, it's sagging, blah, 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 you'll be able to, you know, be able to spot him by this. And, and they're given all these kind of like lack of self-control appearance characteristics. I'm not saying that, that dreads are even, you know, something like, horrible. I know guys that have dreads and I think they're great guys. I know Christian artists that have dreads and they're great guys, but they have to realize that by by looking like a certain part of of uh, culture that they they literally ask for that stereotype to be placed upon them. There's a reason why I try to clean up every once in a while and not look super scruffy and everything because I want people to see, wow, this guy takes care of himself. He maintains himself and because I have the spirit of God living inside of me, uh, finally and foremost, I don't want to be a stumbling block to anyone, not just sin issues, but I don't want to cause all kinds of issues to people who have a different cultural worldview. And Paul was basically talking about that when he said, you're eating these meats and you're doing this and you're offending these people. And he's saying, and you're, and you're not eating these things and you're offending these people. I mean, you know the Bible. So I'm not going to just quote the Bible at you and try to blah, 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 blah. Because you'll tell me, you know, that's not exactly in context. He's not talking about clothes. Okay, fine. He's talking about something that was culturally accepted at the time. Now, in, in your other statement, you basically said, and I'm not being mad, I'm kind of rushed because I'm trying to text somebody right now and tell them I'm at home <laughs> bringing me a key back. Anyways, long, long story short, man, um, I compared it to the mission field and everything, and you said, okay, we're well, not going to go to China and tell a guy to throw away his Chinese stuff. And you're right, I'm not, because their Chinese stuff is a part of their heritage as far as it's respected in the community as these are people who have a a, a sol solid heritage in the Chinese culture that, that just because they wear this garb, it's not reflecting the prison system. It's reflecting the heritage of years and years of family lineage. You, you don't attack that. That's stupid. But when it comes to the whole sagging and wanting to be like sweat, you know, not just swagged out, but totally look like you don't have any self-control. When it comes to that, it's the appearance of evil. You you are trying to emulate most of those guys, not all of them, I can't judge all of them. Like I said, I'm not judging on a local or a individual level. I'm judging on a global um and a community and a congregational viewpoint. So I believe those people need to be reached. I believe those guys need to be reached. Not just those people, but those guys. I believe all those guys need to be reached. But sometime, there has to be this kind of desire to say, look, dude, that's not cool. Man, that's not going to help you get further in life. And I, I believe the most important thing is the gospel. The most important thing is the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, that he came, he lived a sinless life, he died for all of our sins, for all of our wrongdoing, and then three days later he rose from the grave. I believe that he is the center of my message, but I also believe in teaching these guys about real life and how to help them with their real life. Because although some of them may never accept Jesus, I want to know that I still had some kind of impact on their life that maybe years down the road, they may never accept Jesus while they're in my ministry or whatever. Maybe years down the road, they go, man, you know, Pastor Conrad said something about dressing like this. And, you know, he took a pretty hard stand for it, man. And he told us that this, this is going to really affect where we go in life, man. Maybe I should change things around. And, and that's my heart, man. My heart is to just reach a generation that is reflecting uh, the the pro pretty much the most evil generation of of culture you know cultural music and all that stuff that there is 
And man, I just want to reach them and I want to show them that there's something better, that they can be men, that their lives, what they wear shows that they demand respect, that they are they are walking testimonies of of reflecting Christ. And here's the here's the here's the number one end all. And there's no real, I can't think of a scripture right now. And I just do this late. I got done mowing my lawn front and backyard, and I'm tired. Um, but one of the biggest things, man, and and I just want to I want to leave you with this with, with this thought. And of course, it just left me now. And I'm saying I'm going to leave you um, with this thought. Totally left me. Fail blog. Um, <laughs> that's why you never wait to make your major point. Um, these guys are dressing this way. They're doing all these different things. I don't want to, I don't believe people should have to look through a microscope to find Christ and the application of the, of the theological principles man, uh, found in scripture. I think man should be able to look at, look at another man and say, this guy Looks like he's worthy of respect. He looks like a man I can trust. He looks like a man that I would like to have representing my business. That's my goal is to raise up a culture of men that show Christ in their in their actions, in their attire, in their attitude, and most importantly, in their in their life in general. Anyways, man, have a great night. God bless you, brother, and God bless everyone who watched this. Love y'all.